Hi there, this is Malay and welcome to my channel. In today's video, let's take a look at the mouse and the keyboard actions in Power Automate Desktop. Very first action, we will take a look at the block input. Now let us say you have a big process where you want to make sure that when the process is running, there shouldn't be any interactions through the user mouse or the keyboard. At that point of time, you can use block input. It says block it to yes. So I'm going to say yes. And then to just replicate a scenario where there is a flow which is running different actions for let's say just 10 seconds. This is just a sample. And I want to block the input for 10 seconds and then go ahead and unblock the input. So I will again drop that and I will say disable. So now it will unblock. Let me go ahead and save this. Let me run this and you will observe that when it starts, it is blocked. I am literally clicking on the keyboard and moving my mouse. It's just not moving because the input is blocked. After 10 seconds, I will be able to do it because then the input will be unblocked, right? Now to show you this, let me also add one more wait action there. And I will show you that it is actually unblocking by moving the mouse and the keyboard. So it is now blocked. I'm moving, I'm pressing the keys, just not working. Let it unblock the input. Now my mouse is moving and I'm able to click on the keyboard as well. So that's block input. Okay, so let's delete this now. The next is get mouse position. Now you may would like to use this get mouse position when there is a cursor at a specific position in the Windows application, client server application or a web application or any page. You would like to get where the mouse is and that is where you can use this get mouse position. The X and Y coordinate of the mouse with related to the screen will be stored into the mouse position X and mouse position Y. So let me go ahead, click on save, hit run. I'm keeping the cursor towards the very extreme left top that means it is at zero, zero, you can see in the flow variables. Let me go ahead and put it somewhere in between, but again, extremely on the top. You will see the position Y is again zero, but X has moved to 898. If I click on run and move towards the little right in the bottom, you will see that it has changed the position. So depending on the requirement where you would like to get a position of a cursor at that point of time, you can use the get mouse position and get the x and y coordinates. Now the next is move mouse. So if I drag and drop move a mouse, you will see that where exactly you want to move the mouse. And the good part here is if you would like to just validate the x and y coordinates, you can move your mouse right away and you will see that these numbers are changing. The coordinates are actually changing. So if I take the mouse all the way towards the extreme left top, it will be zero zero. If I go towards the extreme right on the top, it will be 19190. Similarly, if I keep moving down, then Y changes, but X remains same. If I move to the left, X will also change and Y will also change depending on the cursor position. So that is how you can get the current position. So if you would like to move your mouse to a specific position in a page, maybe there is a button, maybe there is a hyperlink, maybe there is a label or a text box that you would like to enter the data in you can get the X and Y coordinates of that and then you can move your mouse towards that specific control and then you can take an action. So for that, you can use this. So for now, I can hover over on the view menu action. You can see the X is 307 and Y is 21. So that is where I would like to move my cursor. So I will specify 306 and 21. So 306 and Y is 21 relative to the screen and relative to the active window, relative to the current mouse position. So I will go with the screen. And how do you want that mouse cursor to move? Do you want that with the instant? Do you want with the low speed, normal speed or high speed? I will keep the normal speed so that we'll actually see what's happening. Click on save. So click run. Let's wait for that to start and you will see that my mouse is now moving towards the view menu option. Let's delete these two real quick. Delete, delete. 
The next is move mouse to an image. Now this is where you have a use case to find an image on a page and then maybe you would like to right click on an image and then save it into your local desktop or the laptop. There can be different scenarios but this helps you to move a mouse by finding an image on the page and that's what we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and select the image and for that I will just go for a simple example. I will try to find a Google image on the google.com and that is where we would like to move our mouse cursor to. So for that go ahead and click on select image. Now I already have selected the image but I'm going to show you how we actually capture this. So capture the image in 3 seconds, 5 seconds or a custom delay. If you have a page where you know that it takes a bit of a time to capture that image you can specify in a custom delay. This is the design time setting. I'm good with capturing in 5 seconds. So I'm on the google.com and now it is allowing me to select the image. So let me go ahead and select the image. I'm happy with the selection. So now let's go with Google logo and I'll call it as underscore 2. Click on OK and now we are back to the designer and you can see that we have now selected the Google logo 2. After finding the image, how do you want to move your mouse? So let's now this time go with the high speed. Occurrence is 1. Send a click after moving the mouse. So exactly what I said, if you would like to send a click, then you can select yes and you can select whether you want to go for a left click, right click, double click and so on. In this case, we do not want to send the click. We will see that separately into a different action, but you have this option. If we open the advance, you can see wait for an image to appear. You may have a page where image takes a bit of a time to appear. So you would like to wait for that to appear on the page. You also would like to set the fail timeout to seconds and then where you would like to move your cursor in the image. The default is the center. If you would like, you can go with the middle left, middle right, top left, top right or so on. There it will stop. The cursor will stop at that position. Search the image in the entire screen. Yes, that's fine. And I'm good with that and it will give you the X and Y coordinate of that image where the cursor has moved. So we are good with this. Click on save. Now before this can really run, we need to launch a browser with google.com. So let's go ahead and launch Microsoft Edge. Let's configure the website. Com. We would like to open the maximized window and click on save. Let's go ahead and run. It will launch a new edge window. Open the google.com and it will try to find out the image which we have specified and it is located and you can see it's moving the cursor and it is exactly stopped at the center of the image. So that's how you can actually use the move mouse to image option. So let's go ahead and delete these actions real quick. Now it's time to take a look at move mouse to a text on a screen. Now this option helps you to recognize the text within the scanned images, scanned PDF file. You can also of course look for a text in a PDF file, but this is more about looking for a text in the scanned PDF in an image where the optical character recognition comes into play. We have two types of OCR engine available here. We have the Windows OCR engine and the Tesseract engine. For now, I'm going with the Windows OCR engine, but you can also go ahead with the Tesseract engine as per your need. Now, in an example, I have a PDF file and this is actually a scanned PDF file. So it is not the plain text PDF file. If I double click on the word, you see that the selection is not coming up. And what we are looking at is we are looking at let us just say that at this word s l e r e x e that's the word that we're looking at within the scanned pdf or it could be any text within an image so that's what we're going to be configuring let's go back and look for a text to find so it is the s l e r e x e that's the text i'm looking for in this scanned pdf search the text in the entire screen 
you can also search the text only in the foreground window. So the current dialog box that you are seeing, the move mouse to a text on a screen is actually a foreground window. The designer is currently in the background. So if you have a model dialog box, if you have some pop-up, and if your text is on that pop-up on that dialog, you can actually select the foreground window because that will be actually in the foreground. Otherwise, you can go with the entire screen. You also have some OCR engine settings because the OCR can also help you to detect those texts into a different languages. You can use a different language if so. And even in the advanced option, just like what we saw in the previous section, you can determine the exact position in that text where your mouse cursor should be halted. Okay, so let's minimize advanced and let's minimize OCR engine settings. We're good with this and you will see you get X by coordinate of that location. You also get the width and height of the text that's found. Click on save and again let's launch the Edge browser and go for the scanned PDF. Let's launch new Microsoft Edge. Launch new instance and let me give the URL of that PDF. Windows state going to be maximized and that is it. Click on save. Let us just double check if we have the instance. Let's change it to a normal speed so that we'll get to know it's really moving. Otherwise, it's very instant. We'll not get to know. Let's run. Wait for the edge to pop up and open the PDF file. And to now look for the text as it has found, you can see, and it's moving the mouse cursor. And you can see it has also got the X and Y coordinates and also the length of the text, width of the text. Let's go ahead and delete this. We'll keep it as it is. Now it's time to look for the next action and that is send mouse click. I'll be looking for this button which is tried yourself in the W3 schools and we'll be clicking on this button. That is what we're gonna be trying to do. So let's copy this URL. Let's put it inside the launch Microsoft Edge browser. Let's replace this with this URL. And now let's go ahead and drag and drop move mouse to a text on a screen. So the text to find was try it yourself. And that's not the regular expression. We only have one occurrence. Look for entire screen. Go for uh, high speed OCR engine settings. We are all good with this. Click on save and then let's go ahead and click on a button that we have found. Click the left so that we are able to click on the button. Depending on the requirement, you can also do the other clicks. Click on save. Let's hit run and let's see this in action. It launched a new Microsoft Edge. Navigate to that URL. It will look for the button with try it yourself and it is moving as we can see slowly and it will click on that button and then it functions as defined in the site. So I hope these simple examples helped you to understand some of the mouse and keyboard actions. For all the remaining keyboard and mouse actions, we will see them in part two. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching the video.